Yeah. And he can do what was considered by many to be the world's first social psychology experiment. Now, in the 19th century, they didn't have these, there wasn't any Facebook. What Norman liked to do was go down to the velodrome. Do you guys know what a velodrome is? No. Do you, are you familiar, do you, have you heard of Victoria Pendleton? Olympic cyclist. Yeah. What he noticed is that, is that when each athlete was trying to set their personal pace, they only ever managed to get it when they were cycling the competition, as opposed to when they were just cycling, just trying to get their lap records. So as a scientist, he goes back to his laboratory and he sets up an experiment with some fishing reels. But I'm not going to use fishing reels. I'm going to use you first. You're right, you know this? I'm going to use you second. Now, I don't know how quickly Martin gets done in your school, but it took until 1930, full 10 years, before scientists went back and went, how do I just research these college students who did these sons? Uh, before they went up, didn't they? Yeah, they did more sons. And did they get them right? Uh, no. Oh, how? Well, they got more wrong. In fact, they made silly mistakes. They realised is that some things, yes, we're good at, some things we're not very good at. And, and they bring down to the fact that, well, we become physiologically aroused or excited when there are other people around us. Try to imagine right now that there's a monster come from behind the curtains and it's going to eat all of you. You've got two choices. Good one. That's one of them. You're either going to run for the door, flight, run for the door. Or you're going to stand there, you're going to fight it. Now it's moments like those when we get a little bit done, but this kicks in. The dominant response. Now the dominant response is one of two things. The dominant response is either something that's very, very easy, or it's something that we've learned to do very, very well. But it's maybe not so easy. So let's look at our example. Are we designed to do quadratic equations? Certainly. How can we make something just like eating that is necessarily easy? Something that when we're in a social setting, we're brilliant at. It needs to be something that is almost a second nature to us. Now this is the reason why 19th century psychology actually influences the way that you are taught. This is why your teachers have revision sessions where they go over to a game, a seven eighths of a kilometre is what you did. Very fast game. And again, and again, and again, and again. 0.79. Think about this from a, from a world record point of view. One hundredth of a second. That's pretty good. Think about it from the exam room. One percent. How do you feel that this sort of, this, that kind of teaching makes science come alive? It allows us to kind of ask deep questions and find out yes. a lot more about science. It kind of allows us to see how science works a lot more. It's nice to be able to interact with the actual activities which have made it better and more enjoyable. So what, what sort of things do you find really important that help you to learn the best? In a way that children can understand it, not just all the fancy words, but it's still dressed up the same science, but it's just in a more understandable way. So something that, that's got an application? Yeah. How did you find that session? That session was great. I mean, I, I, I love the application. I like some of the, uh, uh, the video stuff that we are using in terms of have a look, try it, see what you feel about it, and then explain what's gone behind it, rather than explaining what's going on first and then showing. It's very much a case of experiencing it and then explaining it afterwards. And for me, that's, that's the way it should be. So you can you know, find out what's going on for yourself and then put the explanation behind it. Good session, I really enjoyed it.